personal finance expert, MeVest founder, Leslie Ann Scorgi, joining us on Canada Now. And Leslie Ann, a recent article of yours in The Star discusses how to handle the big gift expectations person in your life for the holiday season. You know these people. Sometimes <laughs> they are like the six-year-old cutie patootie who is staring at you with great big eyes and so much hopefulness and sometimes they are the 60 year old in your life whose love language just happens to be receiving big gifts and these folks you know they come by it generally pretty honestly they have big dreams around what they're gonna get for the holidays and especially for the younger ones you know there's like a lot of um, hopefulness around what Santa Claus will bring them. But let's face it, the economy is not that great right now. Our food costs, like new report this week, are up about $1,000 over the course of this year alone. So we're looking at this going, Ooh, you know, how do I, <laughs> how do we handle these people? And, you know, the other thing I just want to say is like, let's, be really clear here, a giant gift isn't going to make your holiday season better. It's not going to save your marriage and it's not going to do that magical thing that maybe you're hoping it will do. If you're going to do it, it's got to be with like a no strings attached mentality and you just can't have your own hopes hanging on some kind of outcome that is not real. <laughs> That's right. So before getting this big gift, a few things to consider. One, uh, who is this person that is putting this kind of pressure on you? Well, and I think to uh, the money psychology side of this, if we dissect the facts versus the fiction, you may find that the only person putting pressure on you for this giant gift is you. So if factually this, the, the, the receiver has said to you, I expect this big gift, that is a fact, right? They've told you, but if you look and there hasn't been anything like that, they haven't actually asked you for that. And you in your head, have this idea that this is the way forward. I, I feel like this is the right time. I've got to do this. If you really look at that talk track that's in your head, it might just be you. And I'm going to give you a really good example. There is a pile of pressure around the holiday season for couples to get engaged. So much pressure. You see it everywhere on social media. And it's, it's funny because as I'm talking to you today, this is the week a number of years ago that my husband proposed to me. I get the pressure, but I, I specifically pluck that example out because uh, there may be a scenario here where the, the receiving partner hasn't actually asked for that, but you feel like this societal pressure because of your social media feed, like I've got to do this. I've got to do this. Maybe it's not real. Yeah, it, it could be, but maybe this person does actually deserve the giant gift that you want to get for them. All right. So you're there. You've established yeah. that. What do you do? <laughs> I love this. Okay. So you want to do this. It feels like the right thing. Maybe you've had even some communication around it. So I always suggest like start with some research, the cost of the item, you know, where are the best prices going to be offered and can you negotiate, especially with local retailers. So we need to consider where we're buying from as well. So big box stores are one avenue, but you may find actually local real retailers are more competitive if you just go out and ask. So we're starting with research. The next thing is we're looking at the secondhand market. Um, and I hate to say this, especially around like the jewelry side of things. A lot of things happened during the pandemic that were not very good for relationships. And if you just have a look on your Ikichiji or your Facebook marketplace, you might discover there are some very beautiful pieces of jewelry available for sale at a fraction of the cost. 
check the secondhand market. Uh, there, there, it's, it's really cool. I was actually talking to one of my, uh, one of my clients this past week and she's doing all of her gifts for her family via the secondhand market, which is so nice. cool. Yeah. So, so cool. Right. Then now we're thinking like, okay, so <laughs> I just don't have the money. I might need to downsize the purchase. So this is you saying, okay, giant gift. I want to do this, but I might not be able to do the one carat diamond. Maybe a 0.75 is like the way that I'm able to do this giant gift for the person. Again, I'm referring to the proposal side of things, but it yeah. applies across the board. And the other thing is like, there is a scenario here where you don't have the money and under the tree, you are leaving an IOU note. And the IOU is like, this gift is coming, but it's actually better to purchase it in a better season of the year. And I'm thinking like boxing week, or even if there is better pricing around the springtime, you may, <laughs> you may find that that IOU is very welcomed, especially if you have a financially conscious uh, receiver who's like, yeah, you know what? That makes so much sense. We'll save so much money. That's a great outcome. Yeah. And, and we'll shop for it together. Like that's something you could yes. say as well. And it might be a fun experience to do in tandem. Okay. So on the flip side, Leslie Ann, what if this person who wants this giant gift is just not in touch with reality? How do you best say no? <laughs> it's like, and I, these are the big dreamers who are just like, they're on Mars, right? And I'm going to give you an example. Like maybe you've been dating somebody for three months and they are saying to you, I want to go on a $10,000 holiday. Uh, my, my very best advice is you gain the courage to say no early. So there are a few factors here. Uh, no is a very full and complete sentence and it establishes boundaries. Those boundaries are key to helping you and the receiver understand what's appropriate in gift giving and not appropriate. Like this sets boundaries for a long road ahead. So do that no early. And I get that this is a courageous move, but at times you go, you're going to have to you're going to have to come up with that that no i would also recommend having a, a bit of a broader conversation around the the picture here so what are the expectations really about especially in a relationship right uh is this person like honestly if this were me i would be like I'm out of here, right? Like, I don't want anything. <laughs> I know, to, me too. <laughs> like, it, it just, it, the idea of it, it oh gosh, it, it really sends. <laughs> Apparently, I'm like referencing a, something in my, my past while you I was look, writing. You, I, I have the benefit of seeing you right now over Zoom, and you look so repulsed by this person, <laughs> whoever this person is. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, of course, like, if this is a child, um, it is so important that you have an empowering conversation. Yeah. So I always recommend, you know, like this is a, a this is about choices and, and talking to your six-year-old to say, you know, we have choices that we make in our family about how we spend resources. And this is a great idea for a gift, but we're going to make other choices this year so that we all have a wonderful holiday season keeping it positive, even with your, your love, if, if this is the person that's asking you for the big gift, you know, you're having that, that set, that conversation that's positive and it is around choices. I want to also throw something in here because clearly I've also seen this in the past. Personally, if the person is saying to you, uh, if you love me, you will give me this giant gift. I need to be so clear here 
uh, this is not healthy. It's borderline emotionally abusive, especially when uh, the relationship is in a fragile position. And, and I'm going to call out a really specific example where we see this happening. It's actually when a lot of relationships are falling apart and it's like, let's save this. Uh, even let's save this friendship. So this is garbage. It's not healthy. And uh, if you do need some support to get the courage to say, no, I'm done with this, this narrative, um, talk to your therapist. It's, it's a really great way to spend your actual money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, a is, <laughs> that is uh, money well spent. And, you know, I think that advice is especially great for those that might be say, and maybe I'm mirroring my own life here, but it's someone that, that might be in their early 20s, because I think about me in my 20s, and, and this scenario didn't happen, you know, where somebody said, if you love me, you got to buy this. Uh, I don't know what I would have said in my 20s if that were to happen. But being that young, I, I might have been like, ah, oh, what are you going to do? You know, uh, yes. how can I live without this person? But now in my mid 40s, if that scenario presents itself, I'm like, bye. Yes. <laughs> I think that's the beauty of like maturity, right? Yes. <laughs> you just say like, wow, I used to put up with so much garbage in my 20s yes. and that is not, that's not on. Now, like, I think when I was preparing this article this week, I really didn't want it to come off as uh, me going all Grinch on the big gift expectations people out there. That's not what we're talking about. I think when you're looking at this holiday season and the really unique situation we are all in, we've got a declining housing market, the, the stock market's not so great. A lot of people are not receiving bonuses and pay increases this year. This is about mindfulness. It's about choosing what is right for you, right for your bank account, but also what is going to be right for your heart. Because money and mindset is about affordability as much as it is about feeling good. And I can tell you a fast track way to feeling rotten over the holidays is going into the holidays with a pile of debt that you cannot afford and not feeling great about the gift, the giant gift giver or whatever presented itself this season. Yeah, it's going to make for a lousy January as well. You got to stay the course financially and emotionally when gift giving this season. Check out mevest.ca. Personal finance expert, me vest founder, Hank and Dot's mom, Leslie and Scorgy. Leslie and appreciate it as always, my friend. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff.